Hello friends, let's talk about your chat app. Can the app that you currently use translate messages from Chinese or Portuguese to your preferred language of choice? Will it let you chat in house or Yubo, Yoruba or Robo languages? Whatever language with someone who is writing in Swahili. If no, listen up, listen up. Does the chat app that you use now cut off your audio or video chat when a landline or, or, or a SIM card call comes in? Do you spend a lot of money on data with your current app? If so, it's time to switch. I'm happy to introduce you to Olango chat app. Olango chat app is a new app that takes you to where all other apps only dream of. More importantly, it is our own Nigerian own. Olango services are rich and customized to bring you real values. You can download it at every app store out there. Thank me later. Thank me not now. Thank me later. Olango apps taking you where other apps only dream of. Introducing Dr. Jackie Damage. <laughs> Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Davidis. We are coming to you from the greatest city in the world. Yes, yes, yes. New York City is so great that a $6 plastic crown that rapper Notorious B.I.G. wore on a photo shoot sold for almost $600,000 at auction. Yes, $600,000. Look at the headline now. Look at the headline. $600,000. You know, Notorious B.I.G.'s crown selling for six hundred thousand dollars makes me wonder how much Kanye West Grammy Award will fetch at auction when sold you know what I mean especially the one that he peed on he dropped inside the toilet and peed on it <laughs> take a look <laughs> now Kanye West did that to protest his inability to buy his own music master tapes he has the five hundred million dollar price he wants to buy them so that he will have control of his work, but his record label won't let him. This is how bad the music industry is and how messed up the kids of nowadays are. Nowadays, our new, young, young, young generation, young, young generation's uh, new uh, generation born now, they said they don't know. People said, this is, uh, this is uh, cassava. They said that cassava will pluck cassava. Wait, 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 forget about Kanye West. Wait, 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 wait. Who, who was that? Is that not a candidate for governor in Nigeria? <laughs> I've told people, English is not our mother tongue. They should let us speak what our mothers used to speak, you know, when we were born. <laughs> they should let us speak those languages. Anyway, does anyone know where Idi Amin Dada's uh, accordion is? No. You don't know? That one will fetch a lot of money at auction, considering that the DNA of the people that Idi Amin Dada killed and ate are still on the accordion. Take a look. This is how they play accordion. <laughs> and this is when he said, kill him. <laughs> All right, so, 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 okay, okay. You may not like Idi Amin Dada of Uganda, but definitely you like Fela Nikola Bokuti of Nigeria. Now, now, how much will Fela's uh, saxophone fetch at auction? I remember Fela today because most young people do not know that Fela's greatest achievement is not in his music. His music, they were wonderful songs. But Fela's greatest achievement was what Fela did for HIV. Did you say what? <laughs> Fela did for HIV what President Donald Trump did for COVID-19. Sasha! Tweet that out. You don't hear stuff like this on all these other small, small programs. <laughs> Until Fela contracted HIV. Most Nigerians did not believe that it was real, that it was a real disease. No, not even the death of 200,000 Americans will make some Americans believe that COVID-19 is real. And then last week, President Donald Trump got it. Oh yeah. And for the first time, most Americans now believe that COVID-19 is real. If COVID-19 could catch President Donald Trump, the most 
protected man in the world. He could catch you. Take a look. They described it very much as the president returning to the White House to continue his treatment. Trump caught COVID-19. He went to the U.S. military Walter Reed Hospital. And in three days, he defeated the disease and returned to the White House. Take a look. Amazing. You know, Trump could have left the hospital after one day's stay, but he didn't want to make Jesus look bad. You know, remember that Jesus spent three days and three nights in the grave before he resurrected. So Trump, Trump made it three days. He just decided, you know, let me just hang in here for three days. <laughs> I just left Walter Reed Medical Center and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. Hey, yeah, the stable genius learned so much about coronavirus. He must have learned something that his uh, uncle at MIT doesn't know. Let us hear what uh, Trump learned. Let's, let's hear him. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. Wait a minute. What happened to the old uh, chloroquine? Eh? Wasn't oxyhydrochloroquine uh, the, the old medication? What happened to it? Why is it that he was talking about new medication developed recently? Eh? But he was telling people to take uh, hydrochloroquine. Anyway, Listen to him again. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. <laughs> Did you hear that? Trump said that he felt better than he was 20 years ago. Should America be happy or <laughs> scared? 20 years ago was when Trump was not paying his taxes. He was spending his money paying for you know what. <laughs> 20 years ago was when he was grabbing them by you know what. Wasn't it 20 years ago that he first changed his voice and called Forbes magazine and told them that they should add the name of a businessman called Donald Trump on the list of billionaires. It was 20 years ago. Anyway, forget about Trump. Trump will be fine. From here, he will go on to win the November 3 election. He will. Trump will be fine. Forget about him. Let's concentrate in Africa. And so America will be fine. But will Nigeria be fine? Take a look. The presidency has said it will not respond to comments suggesting Nigeria is on the brink of disintegration if it does not do one thing or another. <laughs> Say what? President Buhari is under pressure. He is like an old fox, cornered and surrounded by hunters. He could sense that the end is near for him and his family of fox. <laughs> so, so he is putting up what is called um, the initial gara gara. <laughs> Wait until the hunters turn on their flashlights on his face. Then he will put on the final gara gara. <laughs> it's perfectly arrogant people like Buhari who made our ancestors say that <laughs> now, the best English translation that came to mind was what John F. Kennedy said when he, he, he said that those who make peaceful means impossible make violent means inevitable. You know, it has been a tough week for President Buhari. And, and, and it looks like it is down the hill from here on. Oh, yes. It started when he wished President Donald Trump a quick and full recovery from COVID-19. Look at Buhari's tweet. Hey, yeah. Nigerians descended on him. The one that pained him most was Whiskey's reaction. You know Whiskey, the musician. Oh, yeah. The musician who has reached the height where he doesn't need a Nigerian government patronage to survive. Fired back at Buhari saying, <laughs> uh, Donald Trump is not your business, old man. Hey! <laughs> Police and SARS still kill Nigerian youths on a daily basis. Do something. Nothing concerns you for America. Damn! <laughs> As expected, Buhari's attack dog 
uh, Loretta uh, Onoche fired back at Whiskey, calling the musician dumb kid. <laughs> dumb kid. Hey, yeah, bad mouth. Anyway, the thing that penned that the thing penned them so much. She said that Whiskey showed crass ignorance, insensitivity, and childishness. Damn! That was exactly the expression I was looking for to describe uh, President Buhari's uh, reaction. You know, when people were telling him to pay attention to Nigeria and the need to restructure Nigeria. Crass ignorance, insensitivity, and childishness. Whiskey's reaction is a very significant one. He is a clean court brand, not a bastard like uh, Dr. Namages. What? Wait, who, who wrote this crap? Who wrote this crap? <laughs> to tell you that they are ready for Buhari. Another clean court one, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Wedding. Oh, yeah. Adeboye is not like the rascals, like uh, Apostle Suleiman or Pastor David, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, UBA, yeah, yeah. Or Bishop uh, David Oedebo. No. Listen to Adeboye. Watch. One, are we sure there will be Nigeria in the year 2060? Yes! Are we sure there will be Nigeria in the year 2060? The man is asking. Only a mathematician, <laughs> he's a mathematician, only mathematicians and unpatriotic people bring up probability when they are talking about Nigeria. The right word to use is indivisibility, non-negotiable unity, things like that. <laughs> Watch. You see, because some people feel that all the all our problems will be over if we if Nigeria should break up. I think that is trying to solve the problem of Nigeria as if it's a simple equation a problem. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. If the probability of total collapse is hundred percent, if we don't do anything then the probability of success of one or two small parts of the, of the country that will break away from the big is better than zero. Hey! Did you see what I did there? I went into my, my advanced mathematics. When Buhari had what that devil said there, yeah. Buhari said, Habba! Ah, Mr. Pastor, eh? give me a break. Eh? No be today. We they hear all of Una Sultanas begin to make noise about impending doom of Nigeria breaking up. Nigeria only breaks up when we Northerners say so. Kajiko, <laughs> everything else is mere noise. Aisha, I beg you, let me get my toothpick. <laughs> that was Buhari's reaction. Taking on Buhari this time is well orchestrated. The vice president led the charge last week. In a speech, he warned that Nigeria could break up if nothing is done to fix it. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, this VP has gone rogue. In recent days, he has gone rogue. He has become the leader of a rebel group inside and outside Asorok. If you hear of a palace coup, he is the kingpin. I'm telling you. Why Buhari is pretending that all is well in Nigeria? The VP is saying that Nigeria may break if we don't restructure. Why Buhari is vowing to fix the refineries? The VP said that government has no business running refineries. Why Buhari's people are defending SARS and the, the police and calling those who are calling for the elimination of SARS as Yahoo boys? The VP is saying that it is annoying and unacceptable that the police is harassing young people. Why DSS is hiring more officers from Kanu State than all the recruits from all the southern states in Nigeria? Oshibanjo is warning that merit and not federal character should be the determining factor on who gets appointment in Nigeria. Hey, I tell you, I tell you, Hamba, the man has gone rogue. <laughs> Something inside the bush is beating the drum for the VP. Sasha, tweet that out. Something is beating the drum. He's dancing out there. Now, here is the reaction to the vice president from the people who felt he was talking to them. Watch. 
Yeah, that's why they are in the office. That's why they are elected. They are supposed to ensure that uh, if there are cracked walls, they are supposed to mend it. Of course, mend it. The man, the man has a point, you know. The vice president is always talking as if he's not part of this government. Let us listen to the man again, you know. My other worries and, uh, is the fact that a section of the country is orchestrating certain hatred against the other section of the country. This will not help us. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, orchestrated hatred by word of mouth. Yeah, often it could lead to uh, action, you know. But, but, but the man who is complaining, what has he done about the headsmen who are already acting on their hatred? It is the action of these headsmen that are instigating the reaction from these people. How did um, the learned people say it? He who must come for equity must come with clean hands. You do know that? <laughs> now, talking of clean hands, in his 60th independence anniversary speech, President Muhammadu Buhari said that petrol price in Nigeria should not be cheaper than what it sells in Saudi Arabia. Listen to him. Saudi Arabia charges 168 naira per liter. It makes no sense for oil to be cheaper in Nigeria than in Saudi Arabia. Hey, hey. imagine the other city. Eh? The insult and the ignorance at display. The people who wrote that speech for him failed him. And for him to mouth out whatever illogical nonsense was written for him was sad to watch. Well, it didn't have to <laughs> come from me. Nigerians immediately did some calculations for Buhari. Trust Nigerians. They took Buhari back to school. They reminded the president that before he looks at uh, the price of petrol, he should look at the minimum wage in those countries and government services like medical health care provided to citizens, including social safety nets. You know, <laughs> it was embarrassing looking at the statistics. These people have no shame. They will not mention that Switzerland just approved a minimum wage of $25 an hour. That translates into 20.5 million naira a year. Compared to Nigeria's 30,000 30, naira a month, which is uh, 360,000 uh, uh, a year. Tomorrow, they will compare the price of petrol in Switzerland to that of Nigeria. Think of it before you open your mouth, the one you used to eat uh, to work in Shafa, to tell us how good we have it in Nigeria. Nonsense. Now, here is the kind of logic people who run Nigeria make. Watch. How many Nigerians have cars anyway? How many of them run generators in their homes that they need this fuel for? Is it fair that the farmer and the harder taxpayer money is taken from them and is subsidizing the lifestyle of our city dwellers? <laughs> oh, my friend Gaba Shehu. Eh? Please, please, don't let your university people hear you eh? because they will withdraw that your degree. Hmm? Is, that, is that the best that you learn from statistics? Is it, is it the limit of your computation and, and, and permutation? Following your illogical logic, how many Nigerians use dollars? Is that a reason to let one dollar to exchange for 1,000 Naira? If a dollar exchanges for 1,000 Naira, won't it impact the Nigerians who have never seen a dollar bill? I'm asking you, Gaba Shehu. Nonsense. This is a segment we call Secrets of? Pictures. It's based on a premise that a picture is worth more than a thousand. Words. Now, last week, the son of Nigeria's former vice president, Abuba Katiku, married the daughter of Nigeria's former EFCC chairman, Nuhu Ribadu. <laughs> Clap for them! It is like the son of uh, Anini, the, the, the armed robber, marrying the daughter of Bishop Idahosa. Damn! Such a... <laughs> Look at the picture from the wedding. Look at the picture. Is that no Bolatinubu with uh, Atiku? Ah, 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 Ribadu and uh, Konde? There, all of them. Wow! 
Remember that <laughs> at the height of Vice President Abubakar Tiku's corruption, sorry, I mean, uh, uh, President, um, um, whatever he did, he presidency, uh -huh. when he was selling off Nigerian uh, government uh, companies to his friends for pennies, Nuhuri Badu was the EFCC chairman investigating a Tiku for President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo. Abba! Those were the bad old days. <laughs> bygones are now bygones. They're not in-laws, you know? You see, these people fight in public, but they dine in private. They reside in different camps, APC, PDP, but their children are married to a future that they want to dominate, their bloodline to dominate. We, the poor masses, get food and we fight each other to death on behalf of people who share the spoils of Nigeria for themselves and their children. Oh yeah, we are just pawns on their chessboard. Look at another picture from the wedding. This picture is that of the bride. Forget about Sharia law. Even Pastor Kumui of Deepa Life Church will not officiate this wedding of Ribadu Atiku with her looking that way. Even if the bride is uh, his own daughter, uh, Kumuyi will not do that. The inequality in Nigeria goes beyond the, the, the bottom three of the hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Even law and religion, they bend and bow to the rich. I guess <laughs> all men are curated equal, but some are more equal than others. Do you know where that is from? Yeah? Do you know where? Animal farm. <laughs> it's, I mean, no, that animal farm. That's, that's exactly what's going on in Nigeria. Nonsense. Despite Nigeria's woes, there are still inspiring stories out there. Have you been working so hard abroad and thinking of going into real estate and making a nice return in a short time? Those who bought land, houses, and apartments in Leki, Lagos, at the beginning of this year, have seen up to 20% appreciation, even more. Do you want to be part of it? Maybe you don't have the time or the money. I found someone with a solution to both. There is a woman who started from selling palm oil and okra in Lagos, but is now a multi-millionaire real estate mogul. Yes, Grace Ofure will make it happen for you. She has been in business for over 16 years. For as little as 5.7 million, yes, just $15,000, you can buy a piece of land in Lekki, Lagos, the good part. If you let it sit for just a year, it will appreciate by up to 40%. If you like, you can sell it. You can even keep it as an investment since they don't make land anymore. Yes, you, you can do it. Why don't you have an apartment of your own where you can stay when you visit instead of staying in expensive hotels? And when you leave, she will rent the apartment out for you. Yes, the apartment will be there making money in rental income for you. And you will be paid in any currency of your choice. And should you visit while your apartment is being rented, she will give you an apartment to use for the time being. She will even pick you up at the airport as her special guest. Can you beat that? No more wasting money in expensive hotels if you don't have to. Grace of Rest Company, Life Card Company, we do the heavy lifting for you. They will take care of all the hassles. Yes, no more long stories of money sent home for building construction without a structure standing. No more story of a crooked deal in the hands of friends and family and relations. No more sorrow over investment gone wrong. She even makes it possible for you to join others in real estate investment even if you don't have a lump sum amount to invest, she will let you pay in installments. Grace of Ray wants you to benefit from her knowledge. Unlike typical Nigerian millionaire that you do not really know how they made it. Grace wants to teach others how she made it. Go ahead and visit her website, lifecardcompany.com. There you can join her online classes at her school website, lifecarduniversity.com. You can also explore homes, lands and apartments you know for for sale it doesn't matter where you live in or outside nigeria you can be part of this contact them and tell them that dr damages sent you by using the promo code doctor and you will get five percent discount on land apartments and homes and, and and if you buy from her 
And at any point, you feel like selling because, because your land or your house or your apartment has appreciated. Just let her know. She will sell it for you. She covers all the bases. Now tell me, what is stopping you from taking the step in investing in real estate? For more, follow Grace Ofre on Instagram at Grace underscore Ofre and on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you. You can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Damages and on Facebook at Dr. Damages and on Instagram at Dr. Damages and you can also support Dr. Damages by going to patrons.com slash Dr. Damages. Any amount will help us to keep bringing you the show every week. Hi, I have some great news from Sendwave. The good people at Sendwave know that the new school year is starting back home and this is the time to support family and help with school fees. So Sendwave wants to help you send with love. Now, remember to use the promo code before you make your first transfer, otherwise it won't work. On top of that, everyone who sends to Nigeria, old and new senders, will get 4.5% cash bonus for transfers above $50 or 50 euro or 50 pounds. So what are you waiting for? Come on, come on, hurry up. Now, here is my concern for today. It's taken from page 419 of the book, Their Finest Hour by Winston Churchill. And it says, he who fails to plan, is planning to fail. I go way deep to bring these things to you. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for subscribing. Thank you so much. Support our, our, our supporters. You know, help us. Hi, it's go. Problem solved. Diaspora family, do you live abroad? and have an errand that you want someone to carry out for you in Nigeria. Whatever errand you want can now be taken care of without any hassles. Introducing Help Me Worker. The reliable and trusted people of Help Me Worker will gladly run any errand for you in Nigeria. Go to their website, helpmeworker.com. Use the promo code DOCTOR and they will give you a $5 discount. Help Me Worker.